My guest today is Mike Eaton. Mike, how you doing? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. Welcome back to the show. I Do you know how long it's been since you've been on my show? Oh, it's probably been... When did you start? 15 years ago last week. So it's probably been 10 years ago since I was oh, on the show. Oh, my gosh. That's too long. Yeah. It's all, good. all right. Let's fix this today. <laughs> all right. I'm going to say it was my fault entirely <laughs> because it was my fault entirely. Uh You've been, I know you're still out there in the community. You're still doing talks at, uh, I saw you at Code Mesh. Um, what did you speak about at Code Mesh? I didn't, I wasn't a speaker oh. <laughs> at Code Mesh. Nope, I, I, I did not make you're the cut. Sporting the wife who was running the, the, the I was. Match. My wife is on staff, and so I was there to, to support her and to hang out, do some networking. Um, yeah, I, did take a, I did take a, a long break from community stuff, um, and only probably last year I started to dip my toes back in and get out and, you know, do some meetups and do some conferences and i was just at a meetup last night in cincinnati what kind so, of stuff are you speaking on uh, a lot of softer skills so i do a couple talks in interviewing um, both from both sides of the of the of the table um that's what i did last night in cincinnati was was how to how to have a better interview for people give them you know advice as someone who's been on the interviewer side of the table mistakes i see people make and mistakes i've made at interviews myself but um i do leadership talk um, that's really fun. Um, I do, um, one technical talk is on the, on the docket right now. Um, and I'm putting together a new one on learning and collaboration. Uh, and then I, one of my favorites is one about, uh, five skills that everyone should have, um, just to, to be a better human really is what it comes down to. Well, uh, you mentioned that to me last week and uh, I was, I'm intrigued. Uh, can we just start? What are the five skills? Just, just right off the bat. Spoiler so they word. might, yeah, they might seem a little disjointed, but um, they're they're write things down, right? That's one of the skills people people should learn how to do is write things down. That's a good one. Down. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, nice. Um, and uh, continuous learning, and that's one I think we all hear and a lot of people you know do. Um, but but there's more I to do. it than that, right? A lot of us have never been taught how to learn, and I think it's important that you know it's more than just memorization. It's more than, but we can get into that. And then uh, share, you know. The, some of the best people I know share what they know, whether whether it's through blog posts or whether it's through uh, podcasts or whether it's through speaking or whether it's just helping out the the person that's sitting sitting next to them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think one of the things that we all need to cultivate, especially in our profession, is more humility. And that might that seems a little different than the other ones, but when I look over the course of my almost 30 years of doing this. The thing that's been the biggest downfall for most developers has been their egos. Mine, me included. I, I'm throwing that out there. Me included. Uh, and then I think another skill that that people need to um, better cultivate is leading up. Um, I don't think people quite understand what that means in the context of, of your job. Um, and it's something that it took me a while to figure out what that meant. Um, and so in my talk, I, I talk about all five of those things. And to me, they build on each other. Um, so yeah, so that's my, one of my favorites to give. Yeah. Um, let's start, yeah. uh, let's start with sharing. Cause I think that's something you and I both have a passion for. You said you're just getting back into the speaking circuit. Um, I'm also just getting back into it. I'm, um, I, I have an active blog and you mentioned the show. I'm, I'm I, I like to share what I know. Right. It's, uh, it's, it gives me satisfaction to see someone else learn, but the, you, you tell me your perspective. Right. So, <clears throat> You know, I think all of us, what I tell people, and I've had an opportunity to, to work with a lot of or talk to a lot of developer boot camp graduates, right? Tech Elevator here in Columbus. Um, and then I, I was um, did some training at, at a developer boot camp up in Detroit a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember everyone, that. Every one of us has, a, has something to share. I don't care if you're the most junior person on the team, I don't care if you're fresh out of, of a developer boot camp, or if you've got 30 years of experience, we've all got something to share. And I think that's really important. And I think a lot of the, the people coming into this don't quite, they don't, they don't think they have anything to say, or they don't think they have the voice to say it, right? They're gonna get shouted down by, you know, by some old person of, uh, you can't say that. In fact, last year I saw someone 
post on social media, can we please stop writing blog posts about solid? And I thought, well, that's kind of a, that's a bad attitude to have. Yes, there's a lot of, there are a lot of blog posts about solid, right? Don't get me wrong. They're out there. Um, But to me, that's, that can discourage someone who may have an interest in doing something in in writing something. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's new, who who may be fresh out of developer bootcamp, or maybe just kind of getting into this industry, whatever, right. They may have stumbled on these principles, right. The solid principles, they may be really excited about it and they may be doing a lot of research and like, I, I want to learn these things and I want to understand all these different principles. And so they, they write a blog post. Cool. I'm all for that. Right. Because that blog post that they write may be worded in such a way, may be written in such a way that someone who has struggled with those principles for a long time can read this brand new blog post that someone who's excited about it has written. They may read that and go, Oh, I get it now. Right. So d- don't, to me, don't gatekeep. Don't say you can't write about that. Well, if that, you know, if we, if we can't write about things that have already been written, then none of us would write about anything anymore. Sure. Right. So unless it was invented today, unless it was invented today. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm a big believer in that and I try to encourage um, people and they don't, it, it doesn't have to be speaking. Right. But a lot I, of people, I, I want to share something with that. Uh, yeah. A, a perspective of my own that I, I, I blog a lot. And often it's just a matter of just getting it down, getting my thoughts down on paper, maybe notes to my future self. That's come mm-hmm. something that's what I want to articulate it. It helps me understand it better from articulating it. And I had a manager one time who looked at it and said, but what is the difference between this and just reading the documentation? <laughs> he seemed to be belittling it. And my response was, well, this is my perspective, which I think is what you're saying. You know, yes. I just learned it. And these are what I considered the most important parts of this. And this is the path that I took. And yeah, maybe the documentation is more thorough. Maybe it's, it's written by a professional, uh, but maybe yeah. my, my perspective is helpful to someone. And mm-hmm. every once in a while I do get an email saying, hey, this was really helpful. This was uh, this helped right. me understand it. And that, that's enough for me. That and right. again, the notes to my future self that two years from now when I have to use it again. I well, that, it. that's that's the thing. So I started a, a series on my blog a couple of years ago called Things I Learned. Uh-huh. And this is something I picked up from from someone. Um, I, I was browsing his GitHub repo. I like to do that. That's one of the things I just browse GitHub and find cool things. Mm-hmm. And I found this and he just had this list of things he's learned. Just these one little readme files. Interesting. Well, that's kind of cool. What is um, it? And so I started this series on my blog of things I learned. And I, I tried to make it a daily series and trying to write something daily is I made it 15 days. And I thought this Tell is not sustainable, <laughs> right? I can't, I even, can't do even this. Even getting a show for, uh, weekly is hard. <laughs> yeah. So, but I started writing this series and I know for sure there are people who read some of these and go, what is Mike an idiot? Like what, what's the deal? But it's, it, it is things like, you know, I, I run a Mac and I'm in a terminal a lot and I listen to music a lot and I wanted to know, and I'm a Vim user, so I never want to take my hands off the keyboard. Right. So put all those things together. So I wanted to know how can I control Spotify from the terminal? Hmm. Right. So I, I Googled and I found a bunch of different things and I kind of pulled them all together. And I try to write my posts with the, the, the top half is kind of the setup. Like here's, here's, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to accomplish. And then the second half is here's what I learned. Um, <clears throat> I've had some issues. Um, I had some issues on my Mac running uh, Azure functions. And I, it was just this problem. I could not get past the people I was asking. And I did a bunch of work and I finally figured out what the problem was. It was a, I had, it was a mismatch.net version and, and it was, mm-hmm. it was throwing a fit, but I blogged about that. So I have, there's, there's, I think 20 of them out there now. Um, I need to do more because, you know, someone actually called me out recently. I, I published I published a, a weekly interesting links blog post of all the cool things I found the week before. Mm-hmm. And some of the sections, I leave all the sections there even if I don't have anything. And so my things I learned section, I said, nothing this week, more coming soon. Someone called me out. It's like, you didn't learn anything last week? <laughs> okay, well played. Um, so I need to do them more. But that's the okay. thing. Like they, some of these are very basic. Some of these are very basic things. Like I, I learned how to, uh, 
again, I'm on a Mac, um, but I don't use, I don't use like Finder, which is like our, win our version of Windows Explorer. Right. But I wanted to be able to, like in Windows, I would be in a terminal, I'd say Explorer dot, and it would open up uh, an Explorer right. window in that folder. Yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to know how to do the same thing on my Mac. So I'm like, oh, so I looked it up and I found, okay, you know, OFD dot does the same thing. Open Finder, I don't know what the D stands for. But anyway, so I learned that and I, I posted it. But you said something earlier. I do a lot of this because I know that in six months or a year, I'm going to want to come back to that and I won't remember. Yeah. yeah. And so I'll Notes Google. Your future self. Uh, yeah. No, it's my oh, future you'll Google self. it and your, your article I, I, is the I first hope. one on the list. <laughs> I hope. Um, but then there's, there's another thing I've started doing is instead of creating a, like a whole other part of my blog, um, there are always these little snippets that I use that I never remember how to do. Like, how do I clean up all my Git branches that have already been merged? So I created a GitHub repo called Snippets, and it's just random things like that. It's just random commands. Um, you know, it's like, if what do I do if I want to run a process in Docker and it ends, but I want the container to keep running, right? So I have a little snippet there that I can just copy and paste. Hmm. Um, so whether anyone else sees that, it's out there. And that's the thing is, so last night I gave a talk on interviewing uh, to the Cincinnati.net users group. Mm -hmm. Synog. Synog, yes. I've been there and, a long time ago. Uh, I was talking about... So probably two years ago, two and three years ago, uh, I was in a job search myself. And what I found is I was collecting all these resources, but they were all, I just kind of kept them all to myself. And then I had some other friends start to, they started to look. So I created a, a private Slack channel and I was sharing in this private Slack channel, all these resources. And then I realized this is dumb. So I created a GitHub repo and it's just a readme. And it's, it's, it's job search research, job search and interview resources. So it's got a lot of videos, a lot of, um, there are, are, are links in there to like job search sites, but, but there's videos, there's, there's, um, articles and I try to keep it up to date when I find something new. And I tell people, if you see some gaps, I take pull requests and I, I just got a pull request a couple of days ago um, from someone, hmm. um, because I talk about that. That's one of those that are, you know, and it, I do this weekly blog post and at the top of it, I make sure I link to that and I link to it on, on LinkedIn every so often of like, Hey, you know, I know because we all have to agree that the market the last two years has been a bit rough. And so a lot of people are going through these job searches and, and having to interview. So again, I just want to share that information. I don't want to just hold on to it. Um, and then I love this idea, I'm, I'm <laughs> curious, why would, why are you putting it in GitHub? Why are you not putting it in your blog directly rather um, than linking to it? I could, um, but if people want to make changes, right, I wanted to make it easy for people to contribute to it. Okay. Right, so, 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 number one, GitHub is public, is, is yeah. the first one, and, and that's the other thing too. When I when I talk about sharing, you know, I try to share, do things in public, right? I want it to be where anyone can get to it. It's not behind a paywall. It's not behind some walled garden. It's not. You know, I'm not worried about it surfacing through some algorithm. Um, it's just out there. Mm -hmm. So GitHub was was the kind of the, the obvious choice for me to put it out there. And I, like I said, it's it's a simple format. It's Markdown. People contribute to it. <clears throat> um, and I have a couple other repos that are similar. Um, I have an Ohio tech, re or tech events. Same kind of thing because I was talking to, uh, uh, you know, to Joe Brinkman at work mm -hmm. uh, at Improving. And we were talking about, he's like, hey, do you have a list of tech of, of conferences coming up? I'm like, you know, I don't. And I yeah. looked and, you know, you I can go to, to me. I used to have that list. Yeah, a bunch of people have, right? And you can go out to LinkedIn and you can find things like that on LinkedIn, but it's on LinkedIn. And not everyone has a LinkedIn account. Not everyone wants mm -hmm. to log into LinkedIn to see something. Um, so I did the same thing. I, I spent a few hours and I threw this thing together. Um uh, Sarah Dukavich helped out. Um, she's contributed. Joe's contributed. There's, I've had five or six people submit pull requests for, for events that have come up. Hmm. Um, now, could it be better? Sure. Um, I do have a plan to make it a little, little, little nicer. Um, but, you know, it, again, it's, I, I want to share this information. So if people say, hey, uh, you know, I'm new to Ohio or I'm going to be visiting. What's coming up? 
Well, here's yeah. the link. Um, just hit that. So, but it, it's it's all those kinds of things. And but anybody can do this, right? Anyone can if they have an idea, if they have some information that they want to share with people. I mean, GitHub is a super easy way to do it. Um, even even like standing up a blog isn't necessarily easy, but there are, are ways to make it easier. Um, sure. And, and if people want to just share on LinkedIn, cool, share on LinkedIn. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, Medium is a good a good place, especially if you want to maybe make some a little bit of money. But um, there are, are definitely options out there. But I tell people like your sharing doesn't have to be like public public. It doesn't have to be you're writing blog posts. It doesn't have to be you're you're out speaking in front of however many people. Uh, you know, it really can be. Hey, do something at work. You know, do a lunch and learn. If you don't want to do a lunch and learn, then just pull two or three of your teammates together and say, hey, let's just you know, let's, I want to show you guys something cool that I did or something that I learned or, hey, I was at CodeMash a couple of weeks ago and I was at a talk and I saw this really interesting thing and I wanted to, to talk to you about it. That to me is what I'm talking about. It doesn't have to be this, this grand, I have to have a domain, and a blog and all that stuff or I have to buy video equipment to do, to do podcasts and stuff. Um, so, but I do, I, I, really, I like the low, the low friction that GitHub supplies is really nice. Yeah, for I sure. And the cool thing is with GitHub is you can attach a domain to it. You can have GitHub pages and you can hook up a domain to it and you can have that be your website if you want, right? There's sure. all sorts of ways to do it. If you don't want to just publish a, a mark, a mark document, um, for, for I'll, I'll to tell you it. what, uh, one thing that resonates with you, cause I, I used to do exactly what you did. I had a, a list of. Uh, tech events in the Midwest with dates and links to where they are. And uh, I would update it every year. Originally it was just internal. It was a spreadsheet. I would share it with somebody if they asked for it. And then I turned it into an HTML document, but then to get it on my blog, I had to hack and actually modify the blog engine itself. Uh, I mean, I could put it as a post, but then it has a date on it. Right. And it, this was really a timeless thing. So I had to modify it. So it was an, an extra tab at the top. Uh, right. Which was yeah, a non-trivial thing. It took a few hours right. to learn how to, you know, right. modify DOS blogs themes. Uh, but if I had just put it in a GitHub repository, then right. it would have been timeless. It would have been, and other people contributed. I had that, and I had my same thing with my speaker history. You know, that I have a mm -hmm. list of everywhere I've spoken for the last 20 years. And uh, at one time, that was part of my blog before I, you know, changed blog engines. Right. Um, uh, putting it in GitHub might be a much simpler approach, even though I don't think I would take contributions for that or, you know, right. useful links, as you said, I, right. My, 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 the wheels are spinning <laughs> inside of my head of how I can apply this idea to my own life. Right. Well, and I, I looked, I've been blogging since 2002. Wow. Um, I've, since I've since had the some... word blog was invented. Yeah. Right. I, I, I in fact, I did a, a talk at work, um, improving has this really cool thing where people can pitch internal talks and they can they can do them. And I did one on, on blogging because I think I would like to see more people do it because after like you know Twitter kind of took off and you know you saw Google Reader die, there were a whole bunch of things that contributed to kind of blogging taking a, a, a slide downward. But I think more mm -hmm. people should do it. And it's it's I, I'll tell you I'll I'll help you set stuff up. I'll do all sorts of stuff. But yeah, so I realized I've been doing it for a long time. Um, and, uh, but it's interesting to, to look back at some of the things I wrote about and to kind of compare them to today. And there's, there's some timeless things, but there's some things that are super, super dated that, you know, they're out there. They're not going away, but yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so, so I'm sharing trying, to I'm me. I'm trying is, to figure out how long I've been blogging. I'm going back to yeah. <laughs> not 2002. I was after that, but yep. Um, Maybe 2000, it looks like January of 2009, I think is my first oh. blog post. Nope. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not the first one. I just skipped a month. All right. You, you keep on talking. I'm just looking through my, yeah. I'm, hitting, I'm hitting previous month over and over again. Right. right. But, uh, but yeah, so, so when it comes to sharing, I just think it's so important that, that people shouldn't feel intimidated. And I, again, I think that's easier said than done, right? Everyone's going to have that little burst of imposter syndrome. I do. Like when I post technical things, like I get a little, a little, I just never know, right? Because I know there are people out there who are 
far smarter than I am, who have a lot mm-hmm. more experience with some of the stuff than I do. And here I'm posting some of this stuff. Yeah, I still I, do it. Who am I to, to talk about right. this te- technical topic? When, you know, right. Yeah. But, you know, people out there. I still do it and I still recommend people do it as, as much as they can. Um, and of course, you know, I do tell people. So when, when we always talk about speaking, everyone immediately thinks, oh, my God, I'm going to be in front of 200 people in front of a, you know, at a conference. Right. Well, you know, sign up for a lightning talk. Right. So I, yeah. asked, t- t- I was talking really to nice. uh, to our, our friend Phil at Synod last night and I said, hey, because someone said, hey, I want to I want to speak. I want to get into it. I said, Phil, do you guys do lightning talks? Said, yep. There's your in. Right. Five minutes. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be five minutes. It's just get up and talk about whatever it is uh, you want to talk about, you know, whatever you're passionate yeah. about. If you're passionate no about it, it will. I think the pressure will, will kind of fall away once you mm-hmm. start talking about something that you you really enjoy doing. Yeah, and even um, if it's not great, it's you've only wasted five minutes of people's time. It's a low risk. Right. It's a good right. chance to well, see you do but, it. Like but, here, it. but here's the thing. You may not have wasted five minutes of people's time, right? Because it yes. could be. So I was I was at Code Mash and I was in a uh I was in a lightning talk. I was in the lightning talks and uh I sat through I wasn't gonna sit through any of them, right? My wife was like, Hey, let's go watch the lightning talks. But there was one where it's like, Oh wow, that just that what you just said just changed my perspective on something. Hmm. So it now gave me some fuel. So that's what I would hope, you know, anytime if I can just, you know, if one person reads something I've written or I'd like more than one person to come to my talk, but if only one person came to my talk and they get something out of it, that's fine with me. Um, And I'm sure you've had it. I know I've had it over the years of people who have come up to me a year or two later after I've given a talk and have said, Hey, by the way, I was in this talk you gave wherever, uh, and I want you to know it, it, you know, it changed my perspective or I did what, this or I what learned this. What a great this. feeling that is. It's that amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. If you, if you're, even if you're not a speaker, if you're out there and you hear something that somebody says that affects you, tell them. Yeah. We, we live off that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But I will say too, like, I, I don't want people to, like, I don't want to see people share because they're looking for the credit, right? I'm not ever looking for the credit in, in what I share. It's like, I'm doing this. It's almost a selfish reason, right? It's like, sure. I'm writing this stuff for me. Mm-hmm. And if y'all get a benefit for it, cool. Like, like that's my I've interesting ec- links. I've it's echoed like, that sentiment many times. Yeah. <laughs> my, my weekly link post is, 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 a, is bookmarks for me of cool stuff I've read. Right? Treat yourself. <laughs> yep. Hey, I don't so, know if you know this, but on the internet, some people are not as nice as you and me. Did know. you know this? I did not. Uh, have you experienced this? The, getting people that are just jerks about uh, your content, and how do you deal with that when you do? Um, actually, I, I I haven't had that too much on the content, right? Uh, I I, te- I so I stay off X. I'm I'm not on Twitter. I'm I have a Twitter account. I'm if I use it at all, it's it's a write only medium for me, right? Because I just, <laughs> just shouting into the void. <laughs> I'm just shouting to the void, right? Um, and so on, I'm on Mastodon as well. And Mastodon, I feel the engagement's a little bit better. It's it's more mm-hmm. like okay. I, I think the engagement I get there is higher quality, just like LinkedIn. It's like it's like Twitter used to be in its early it's like days. Twitter, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I was talking to to our friend Corey House, um, not this Code Nash, the one before it, because I'm always interested in in someone. But like Corey has a, a huge following on Twitter, and and we were talking about that. And I'm like, how do you handle the noise? How do you, like, I couldn't deal with, with that. You know, I, I'd rather just write a blog post, put it out there. I have a comment engine turned on. If someone wants to comment, cool. If they want to ping me through some way, cool. But I couldn't handle the, because there are a lot of haters, for sure. There's a lot yeah. of people who want to give you the, well, actually, you're wrong. <laughs> and, and all I could say is, I haven't gotten much of it, and if I have, I've ignored it and forgotten about You're it lucky. because it's, that's not that's not worth my time, you know. I'm, I'm right. doing so, it. So, you, so your advice is just to ignore that those just haters ignore just, uh, as best as as best as you can. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. This is cool. This is a uh, really interesting. I didn't I didn't realize we we're going to spend 25 minutes just talking about sharing, but I'm really glad we did because this is interesting. Um, what? Let's say somebody's they've they they have this knowledge in their head or they're learning things and they want to get started sharing. Do you have any advice for those folks? Well, there's there's a couple ways. So um, I write I write I write a lot, right? That's kind of my like if I had to pick one medium for me, it's writing. And that, um, a lot of stuff I've seen your your little lambskin notebooks that are. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, you're, I, I, you're not you're not really sharing that. This you're just writing to yourself. 
So, but I've, I've got I've got different ones, right? So this one is my developer notebook. So in this one, I'm writing down things I'm learning that are, are like more like on projects, like mm-hmm. decisions I've made, so I can kind of remember and go back of like, hey, I had to deal with this technology, and here's the roadblocks I had, and you know those types of things. And those sometimes bubble up into posts, into blog posts. It depends. Um, then I've got my writing journal. Uh, my writing journal is one that I guarantee anything I've ever done in public. Uh, over the last couple of years, started there. I see. So, like, I will almost write out talks as a script. I'll write mm. every word down, and then I'll build my slides, just because that's the way my 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 brain works. I just work better that way. Uh, and then there's my personal journal with my gratitude, and we've talked about that, right? Those are things that that are very personal to me, and and I tend not to share them. But if someone came to me and said, "Hey, I want to, I want to, I learned something, and I want to share." I would ask them, like, wh- where are you comfortable? Like, do you like to write? If you like to write. And here's one of the things I like about blogging over anything else is when I blog, it's there and I can share it forever. I can share it with clients. I can share it with friends and family. I just send them a link. If I do a talk, it's an hour and poof, it's gone. Unless you were there. Or recorded it. Or, or recorded it. But that, that doesn't happen that often. Um, and and I, I don't ever want to, I'm not going to haul gear with me and like my wife wanted her talk recorded and I had to scramble at Codemash to find someone to do it because it's like I I don't know I could stand there with my iPhone and do it but I don't want to do that so um, but I would find out where they're comfortable if you like to write write if you don't like to write don't force yourself to write it, it's gonna it's gonna come across as forced it's it's gonna you can you'll be able to tell um, if you like to speak I would say start small go to your go to the if there's a meetup you go to Talk to the organizers and say, hey, can I do a lightning talk or can I do, can I just get up for a few minutes and talk? Those things. If you, if you're not, and if you're not comfortable with that, then I would say start at work. See if you can do a lunch and learn. Those types of things. Get, right. get more comfortable um, doing those types of things. You know, I don't, uh, there's not a, a, a clear cut answer. It's really dependent on the person and, and how comfortable they are with, you know, pen and paper or, and that's the other thing. Everything I write is pen and paper first, and then it goes right. to digital. Um, it's a meditative experience for me to, to get it. into the, the words that. and the, that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, that's the advice I would give is, is, or seek out the person that, that is sharing, right? Seek out a Dave Giard or, or seek out any speaker you see at a conference. They're just like us. I guarantee it. They're normal people. Don't be intimidated. Um, go up and go up and, and talk to them and say, Hey, I'm interested in doing what you do. Um, and hopefully they're great. They're gracious and they're not, not a jerk, but yeah, um, most, most of the speakers I encounter are, yeah, for sure. Not jerks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, and yeah. you included and awesome. We're about at time. So I just, I want to say thank you so much for joining me and I hope it's not another 10 years before you're back on my show. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I do love talking, um, you know, technology with my friends. I know this wasn't technology. In fact, I looked at your last few few interviews. And I'm like, yikes! I got to compete with a guy who who invented Kubernetes and this kind of yeah. stuff. So hopefully, hopefully this was good. But no, I appreciate it, Dave. I I, I really do. I really love sharing uh, new things that I've learned about technology with friends.